beaders, how are we all? <coughs> Excuse me, I went a bit high pitched. <laughs> how are we? So, if you remember in the last video when I went to visit Mr Bees and I come back with a few bits and bobs and I said I'd talk about um, anklets. Well, I've been making a few, that's not all, I've got plenty over this side as well. But I wanted to have a little chat about the different ways and the different things of um, being able to make anklets. Nothing to be frightened of if you've never made anklets before. It's just about sizing really and the materials that you want to use. So, start off then with stretch bracelets, uh, bracelets, anklets. So you just need to make sure that you measure out um, so it will fit nine inches on a stretch because it needs to go right over your foot and be able to um, sit nicely on the ankle. Now it does look a bit all bunched up. That's because of, let me bring you in a little bit. That's because of the way that the little stones, while they died shall, how they sit. So it looks a bit awkward in the hand. But once you've got it on the ankle, it looks really pretty. I know because I've tried them all. I'll just put a little star, a little starfish on for decoration as a little hang, little hangy thing. And another one. Oh yeah, this was done in a thicker elastic. Can you see how thick that elastic is? So that was done in a thicker elastic. And you can, because the beads are small, Where's my knot gone? So my knot is there. But once you've got it on your ankle, it's really hidden. If you don't know how to do a stretch bracelet or stretch anklet, because it's the same thing, only a little bit bigger, just drop me a message and I will show you. Now this is using a different type of elastic. This is flat elastic. This was round elastic. This is flat elastic. And the ideal about flat elastic is that you can thread a large eyed needle or a big eye needle with your flat elastic and you're able to pick up your beads a lot faster. Whereas on the round you need to hand put each one on. So all the pattern is, I just used size, um, I think they're a six, size six C bead with a little metal bead in between and then just to make my shell beads go a little bit further, my shell nuggets go a little bit further, I put them in between and just made a nice little pattern and then put three little charms. So a seahorse and two little starfish onto a big jump ring and then put it on. But like I say, if you are in need, widen you out a little bit, of knowing how to make elastic jewellery, then do drop me a message. It's very, very simple. It's just about your knots, making sure your knots are, are firm and put a little dab of either glue or nail polish. I tend to use nail polish on mine. So that's those. I am going to be doing a tutorial, don't worry, I just wanted to show you the bits and pieces I've been making first. And then I went on to making, where's my other one? This. I made this one first, and I made this using nylon thread. And again, you do have to sit and thread each one unless it's firm enough to poke through your beads in a pile. But I will show you how to do that. And if you notice, this one is far more fluid. Let's widen you out a little bit more. Or oh, I'm making you a little bit sick, a bit close. There you go. So this is a lot more fluid. But I was a bit worried because it's in threes and I needed to put it through a crimp tube to go through the clot. I was worried that the crimp might eventually go through the thread. But I've worn it and worn it and worn it and I have to say it's still in one piece. So see how fluid that is. Now the others that I made, I made using tiger tail. Now you can see that these aren't fluid at all. They sort of spring back again whereas this is, can you see, it's fluid 
not fluid, this holds its shape, whereas the ones with the nylon thread doesn't. Now on the on the ankle it doesn't how can I explain it? It doesn't look out of place if you know what I mean. And I know that tiger tail is nice and strong. And obviously with ankles and walking through the up and down the sand or going shopping or doing what you want to do with a nice bit of ankle jewellery on. You want it to be as firm as possible, don't you? And secure as possible. You don't want it to to come apart. Now well, these were size 10 little melon um, type of seed bead. Can you see? They're all different colours and and I didn't, my OCD allowed me to just stab it through and away we went. So I was quite impressed with myself with that. I didn't try picking up certain colours. I just went for it and as you can see it looks nice together. And I also made some clear ones, again using the tiger tails and just some clear sea beads. You don't have to use um, your expensive type of sea beads making these little anklets. Um, your craft beads will be okay. Uh, these are Matsuno beads that I've got absolutely tons of. So I decided to use them. I made blue ones, adding some three little starfish on made another blue one using one of my metal charms and where are we and then I went on I thought ooh let me just move these out of the way I went on and made these little anklets just using chain put in um some of my beads onto a eye pin with a little C bead in between. Can you see? Let's bring it in a little bit. With a little C bead in between and turning a loop at the other end and then adding some chain in between. And then on one end adding a little clasp. And then the clasp simply will do up at the end. And you can either, if you wanted to, add a little charm on the end or leave it as is. The, if you know your exact ankle size and you know where you want it exactly to lie, then you're okay. But if you're making for people or making for sale, I suggest an eight and a half inch um, length and then an extra inch for people who have got different size ankles than us because we're all different aren't we we're all different so that's that one then I made some more chain oh let me widen you back out again sorry do it nice and slow there you go then I made another one with chain using bronze chain and just added some of my lovely howlite starfish. These are dyed howlite. Just put them on a head pin, turn the loop, and attach them onto a little jump ring and the jump ring onto the chain. Okay. And then one on the very end so that it will dangle down as a nice little charm. And of course, a um, little clasp on the end so we can attach it. So that's a really nice and simple anklet, but very effective anklet to wear. And of course, you don't have to use bronze chain. You can use whatever you got. I just got a bit of an influx of bronze. So I thought, oh, I'll use a bit of bronze. Bronzy. So that's that. And then I did one with lots of the little starfish with sea beads in between using um, tiger tail, crimp beads and clots a little lobster clasp making sure that I got eight and a half inches of my pattern with a little extender chain 
And then last but not least on the ankle chain method, ankle bracelet method I've been doing were some little seed beads, little silver seed beads. I'll bring you a little bit. Little silver seed beads in between my little discs with some chips. And again, this is so pretty on. I love in green and white together. So gorgeous on. It reminds me of the beach. A little charm on the end. Just using a bolt head pin. Sea beads. So neat. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, I thought... For anybody who doesn't know, I'm going to widen you out a little bit. Sorry about this, guys. In and out, in and out. I am going to use some orange. These are Matsuno beads. I'm just putting them in a pile because it's easy to stab it with my um, file. Do you ever get to a stage in your life where you do nothing but talk rubbish, gibberish and can't get your words out? Well, that's where I am now in my life. I'm just going to cut that bit off. It's got a bend in it and we don't want that. And I'll leave it on the reel. I'll leave my tiger tail on the reel. I've got Percy at standby. If you haven't got a Percy then get one. This is Percy, my uh, tape measure. So he'll come in useful shortly. For the project you'll also need some crimp beads. Two, one for each hand. Some little crimp beads. You will need some jump rings. I've got two sizes here because I'm not sure yet jump rings the five mil and six mil jump rings and um, some head pins in case I need them and a clasp a little bit of chain to add for my extender and I think that should that's your lot I think that's all you need Oh, and tools, you always need tools. So I've just got um, a set of my jewellery pliers. Give me that. Some flat ones. Some round nose ones. And some pincy ones, as I like to call them. But some pincy ones. And of course, some wire cutters. Ching, 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 ching. Right, no more ado then. What we're going to do is, if you grab it... And then stab into your beads. There, it, it, it takes a minute or two to get into the knack and find the best way to get them on. And I've already got a few on. Okay, so grabbing your wildfire, wildfire, your your tiger tail. Oh wow, there's no weight for me. I think sometimes it's time packing, isn't it? Before you know it, as you're going along, listening to your music or doing what you need to do, away with your little thoughts, you soon get quite a bit put on your tiger tail. Well done, Jane. I think I'm going to have to do myself some little cards with the wording on that I need, just to give me a little reminder. Not long ago, I think in one of my tutorials I did, it was um, jump rings. Could I remember what they were called? Could I? Heckers like. Could not remember what they were called. And I think in future I'm going to start calling these tutorials um, beads and talking nonsense. <laughs> So how is it all going with you? Is everybody okay? Have you been beading much? 
I haven't been beading as much as I would like. Um, I think I said in my last video I started work. Oh, ladies and gents, it's killing me. <laughs> I come home a complete wreck. I come home a complete wreck. But there you are. It is what it is. We all need to do things, don't we? Must say I'm enjoying the bit of extra money. But it doesn't give me much time to do what I want to do. Rubbish. I know my little grandson on a tube. Well, he isn't so little anymore. He's 13 now. And um, he isn't so little anymore. But he loves coming to Nanny's for his tea. Although he was quite disappointed because I did um, cottage pie last night. Oh, Nanny, it's far too warm for cottage pie. My little grandson has got um, a few little issues. So, let's just have a look. At, already, with me chopsing on, I've already got quite a bit. So, let's just have a little measure and see how far we've got. Oh, six inches. And you want another two and a half. See, so it does... Now I can't get them on, there we are. Just stabbing them into your pile. Otherwise you're going to have to do this. If you can't do that then you need to do this. Sometimes this can be really therapeutic. Getting them on one by one. Just a case of tilting them. Locking the beads onto the side and putting your tiger tail through. So if you're not using tiger tail and you want yours to be a little bit more supple then go with your um, nylon thread but it does take a bit more effort to get those beads on um, on the string. It does take a little bit more effort. Do you know Notice how you start relaxing and you're breathing. It is one of them projects where you don't really need to be thinking about anything. And it doesn't matter either if you go over on your count because we will save them for the next strip. You want to be doing three. You can do as many as you like. But um, just remember you need to be getting all three wires through a um, crimp bead, sorry. <laughs> through a crimp bead and through your clot end. So let's just have another little look, see then, at where we are on the measurement front. Ah, oh, there you go, so you've gone plenty over. So we only need eight and a half. So take them down. And I know what I have forgot. I have forgotten my little um, springy things. Little springy things. So just hold on there a second. Talk much to yourselves and I'll go get the springy things. And I will, if you like, do a little video of my bead room now. Summer house bead room at the top of the garden. Right, so I'm just going to put a spring on this end. And a spring on this end, just to keep my beads in place. And I'm going to snip off. We don't need too much. Just going to snip off. And I'm going to put that nice and safe, just up the top of my bead mat. I've already got about an inch of um, beads on here. So if you want to fast forward me, or I'll fast forward myself, we just need to keep going until we've got um, another eight and a half. 
approximate inches on our beading wire. Um, how's the weather been where you are? Well, here in Cornwall we had some glorious weather and then I think it lasted for over a week. It was really nice. Um, I didn't manage to get to the beach, unfortunately. Busy with work and recovery. <laughs> oh dear. If anybody's done housekeeping, I'm calling it housekeeping because it's posh. It's a posh word for cleaning. Uh, I'm housekeeping down at a local holiday park. And um, standards are very high, as so they should be. Um, but yeah, it is wearing. When you aren't in perfect, I'm not saying I'm ill. But, God. I've been having these issues with nerve pain in my legs. So... I've been going to physiotherapy and yes it's been helping but I can't see what actually makes it brings it on worse if you know what I mean so I've got these exercises to do and there I am doing little um, lunges and <laughs> and little exercises and I'm waiting for the kettle to boil or teas cooking or what have you I'm doing these little exercises and then I have to sit in a chair and with a band round the bottom of the chair and attached to my ankle and then bringing my leg up and down to try and strengthen because my right one's quite weak and that's the one I get most of the trouble with. But going back some, it starts with my hips. So I got sent for some x-rays, well I thought it was all just my hips that were giving me the issues, but anyway, went on, <laughs> why am I telling you all this? Anyway, I've started now so I'll have to finish. <laughs> so they sent me for some hip x-rays and um, yeah, I've got um, mild osteoarthritis in my hips. And it's like, oh, for goodness sake, great, but as long as it's mild. Um, that's that's okay we can live with that can't we but this pain I'm getting down the sides is driving me insane what can we do and going upstairs was getting again I sound like an old woman oh dear getting going up and down <laughs> this was like I'm like ooh ah ooh ooh <laughs> getting up off the settee ooh ooh <laughs> oh god so Anyway, my doctor sent me for um, physio, and yes, it is helping. I'm not denying that. It is helping. But blimey neck. Wish it would just heal, and I've done. She said my me, me nerves are inflamed. So I'm not to do any walking up and down hills, apparently, but I was like, oh dear. Because that puts a bigger stress on. But still. Anyway, I think while I've been rabbiting on, I think I might have done another lamp. Let's just have a li little look-see. Come on, purse. Come on, my little pursey. Oh, yes. So, another one takes us to about there. So, just bringing this back into play. I can put... And through on one. Oh, it doesn't go now. Go away. And that through as well. Get my pliers. And all I'm doing is cutting some wire off. So I've got two made. <coughs> I've got a couple of inches on this way so just carry on and do some more thready thread 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 so yeah I'm, I'm feeling down on myself at the minute it's not good is it I don't do down me I like to be upbeat and happy and 
Well, I am still not beaten happy. I'm not letting it get to me or anything. Well, only it now when I'm trying to go to sleep. <laughs> oh, God. There's no hope for me, guys. There's no hope. And I've got, um, as you know, those who follow me on Metal Detecting as well, I, I, I'm a lady detectorist. And we've got a club dig this Sunday, providing the numbers pick up a bit. Um, and it's not far away from me at all. 20 minutes out from home for me, so that's good. I'm looking forward to that. I haven't seen the guys for what seems like ages because it's supposed to have been a weekend or last weekend, but the weather for because we were going up to Dorset, the weather forecast was atrocious, so people were pulling out and it ended up being not too bad. But anyway, it got cancelled because of. The weather forecast and people pulling out so that was the end of that and i've been out and i bought me me um <laughs> me porridge for in the morning <laughs> you know in one of them pots just have boiling water because i do like my porridge i don't know in a new air bed because i tried my air bed and it went down so i go buy a new one and now it's not going to get used Hey, it is what it is. I mean, we complained because it wasn't it ended up being not too bad weather up there at all. But if we'd have gone, you know, can imagine what had happened. It'd have been like hailstorms from the hell and tornado winds. Or not that we get tornadoes over here. I'm I'm exaggerating, but you get the gist. Sideward rain and all the, everybody's tents blew away and. <laughs> Um, me hanging onto a tree before I blew up the field and oh you've got to have a laugh haven't you so yeah I was a bit disappointed last week but it is what it is isn't it uh, my other half like oh god you'd have been suffering in any way like yes but I wanted to see all my friends to see people. So, let's have a little look see on here. I think me nattering away. I think we might be at the end, guys. I think. Let me just have a little measure. Yep. Yeah. That'll do. And we've even got a few more on there. So, we'll just leave that on there for a second. Where's my clip clips? There they are. I'm just going to move those bees out of the way for a second. Right, just so they don't fall off. I'm just going to put them on there. Off a spring. And then with these ones, and we'll do the measuring up and Add in a few if we need to in a second. So we need to thread these ends through our crimp tube. Okay. Getting our little crimp tube. This one's through. Second, third. I always find if you have your wires, if you are putting more than uh, one crimp tube on your eyes. If you get them at different lengths, it's easy to go through. That one's escaping. Okay. And then get our pliers, snipe news pliers, whatever you want to call them. We're just going to crimp that it nice and flat and you know what I've forgotten don't you I've forgotten to put the um, clot through first idiot Jane these things happen so I've got I've still got plenty of wire so I'm just going to nip it off and, and try again 
these things happen, I did it. Right. Get a clot first, guys. Learn by my mistakes. Pop your wires. If you can get them, like I say, at different lengths, it does help. It helps them go in a little bit easier. I bet you're all shouting, Jane, Jane, what are you doing? There we go. All those are through. Just wiggle your clot down your wire. And we're going to try again. Threading your wires through. Okay, now we are going to put two on for safety. Just crimping. on with the next one. So again, now if it is that sometimes these little crimps put up a bit of a fight, if you then squeeze it tiny bit not to crimp it just a tiny bit that opens the hole up a little bit more and we can get that crimp down to where we want it and give it a squeeze there we go now we've got two crimps on our wire for safety I like to be better safe than sorry and then just take the excess excess wire off close our clot or clamshell whichever word you use and give it a little squeeze I like to just squeeze it one side just to level the sides up and then give it a squeeze not too much pressure we don't want to flatten it we just want to make sure it's secure so I just give my hand little squeezes over and then that just secures it and then while we're here we can put our lobster clasp on and we can turn closed and I like to give it a little squeeze that way as well just little squeezes not to flatten it just to strengthen it and another little squeeze at the joint so we've got one part of our bracelet done anklet so I'm going to remove the other side now and we just get, let me just widen you out, you're a bit close, sorry guys. Ooh, not too wide. There we go. So now we're just going to make sure that all our beads are down at this end, where we want them to be. And then making sure it's having a look at this end to see if we need to add any beads and we don't I did that pretty well this time no that's fine so again remembering this time to go through your clot first or clamshell whichever you want to, word you want to use going through our clot all the three wires it doesn't want to go in sometimes the holes on these they are I had one I was struggling with before and I had to um, 
change it for another one. Just giving the wires, once you've got it through, just giving the wires a little pull. And if you wanted to do like a crisscross design, then this is the time to do it before you, um, when I say crisscross, like um, a plait or something like that, or you wanted to overlap your beadwork then that would be the time to do it before you put your clot on. And you'd probably need to add a little bit of length to that as well. I'm just going to widen this a little bit just by using my fingers. Just open the clamp up a little bit. There we go. And now we need to get these wires through a crimp. anything it's just a bit fiddly nothing else just a little bit fiddly and I'm losing a wire there get back in there we go just a little bit fiddly remembering the trick about squeezing it just a tiny bit just to open the ring up a little bit Some unknown reason this crimp does not want to play ball. There we are. It's better. And then once it's in place, can you see? Oh, let me just bring you in a little bit. Sorry. Is this level? Once it's in place, down at the bottom of the crimp, remember, because we're now doing the second side, you need to make sure that all your wires are in place, the clot's in the correct place, before you squeeze your crimp tube closed. A nice good squeeze. There's one on. Okay. Now to get the second one on. Second one always for safety. One's behaving itself. Just giving it a little bit of squeeze to open it, taking it all the way down to the first crimp and giving it a good old squeeze. There we go. Cutting off the excess beading wire. And closing. Now for a little tip, if you're struggling closing your um, clamp, holding one side with some pliers and then you're able to pinch it better together. Again, as we did with the other side, a little squeeze on the sides, and then a final little squeeze on the clamp. Again, not to flatten it, but just to secure it. And then before we close our end, adding on an extender chain and closing the loop and securing it, making sure it's completely closed. And then that extender chain is far too long. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to nip it off 
at number six. <clears throat> Otherwise it'd be far too long. There we go. Now it's up to you now what you decide to put on for whether you ha leave it, let me widen your mic a little bit, whether you leave it as is or whether you put a little charm on. I'm going to put a little charm on and I'm going to use my gorgeous starfish. Because I love starfish. I'm going to put a, a red one on, I think. I'm going to put a red one on. Add an orange? Yeah. So, to add our little charm, you don't have to, you can use whatever charms you've got. You can use a, another bead, a bigger bead, whatever you have. So, Head pin, starfish, through the bottom of the starfish. I'll bring you in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. We've turned loose before, guys. You know what you're doing now. Holding the play as close as we can. Bending it over to 90 degrees. Now we only need about a centimetre of um, head pin left to turn. Cut the rest off. Grabbing our wire then between our Pliers and gently bend it over to make an eye pin at the top. Okay. Now to put it on to a jump ring. Small jump ring always opening a jump ring from north to south, never from east to west. I don't think that's going. Let's see. Yeah, we will. Just on one, I'm going to go. Ooh. Five mil jump ring this was guys. Oh, I'm struggling to get my pliers into clip. There we are. For goodness sake. Can you see me eyes? Sorry, I wasn't even in frame then, was I? And there you have your finished anklet. Bravo! Give yourself a pat on the back for finishing off your anklet. Really cute. No, it doesn't look much off. It's when you've got them on. That's what makes a difference. So would you like to see something else? Would you like to see another one? Or are you happy with that? All you needed to do if you were if you wanted to make something like this is to measure off a length of chain, eight and a half to nine inches. Nine inches I say for good measure. And then adding your 
little charms. They don't have to be starfish. They could be anything. They could be beads, crystals, whatever you wanted. Add them onto a head pin, turn in a loop, a little jump ring and adding them to your chain. It's as simple as that. For this one, if you wanted to make one similar to this, again, it doesn't have to be the beads I've used. You can use little crystals, little whatever you want, pearls, whatever you want. It doesn't have to be bronze, it can be silver, little sea beads in between, little sea beads in between, onto an eye pin, and then turning a loop on the other side. And you will want one purse, an inch of chain in between. So it's an inch of chain and just over half an inch including your head your eye pin. Um, so if you said just a half an inch thereabouts of beadwork. Or you can do bigger and use less chain. It's entirely up to you, your design. And again with this just a simple little pattern using beading wire with seed beads in between it's just a nice simple pattern but looks glorious on the wrist oh, the wrist <sighs> I think it's time for a coffee or should that be gin? no I don't drink gin I've got lemon water, look I've got lemon water, it's not gin and tonic it's lemon water in a hedgehog mug lemon water, I need a slip of lemon water go so there you are there is an array of different um, anklets that you can try and this is only a tip of the iceberg you don't have to do it like this you can do sea beads with um, crystal in between you the sky's the limit pearls in between just you just have a single one maybe using size eight sea beads just to give so you can see it or you might just want to date him on with the elevens and just a little charm on or no charm at all just in the centre putting a bigger bead in the centre it's entirely up to you I could have gone on and on and on and on and on just while we're here I wanted to show you this that I made um, I absolutely adored the shell beads and so I made this absolutely glorious look at that oh Jane made you so happy it's absolutely lovely just chain and I turned um, sat and did some little loops with bald head pins with crystals in between and just makes it nice and shiny I did um, bracelet, pendant and earrings I am now out of bald head pins, the small ones I need to get some more in my stash and this was just using chain and just made it into a pendant, what do you think of that kind of you like, oh I loved it That's, oh. It's lovely, very summery. Jane, you already got a bracelet on there. Take that one off. Thank you. It makes a nice sound. <laughs> so there you are. So I hope you enjoyed this short video on how to make um, on how to make some anklets. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you go on to, fi to find it useful. And I hope that you make loads and loads and loads and loads and loads. So, from me, for the short time being, that is it. Enjoy whatever you're going to be up to today, for the rest of the day, or your evening, or whatever it is that you are up to. Enjoy it, and be happy, stay well, stay safe. 
and I will see you all on the next video. Take care. Mm -hmm. But that made you jump. <laughs>